Okay, everybody. The college football playoff is finally here. We're finally back talking college football. I know it's been a long, about week and a half or so. I know it's been a long, long week and a half, but I'm ready to talk once again. And I cannot wait to get my thoughts in on these six matchups. Now, there has been some changes and everything that have been going on over the past three or four weeks, you know, since we got our four teams in the playoff and our other um, four games for the New Year's Six. So, um, COVID is going to be a huge factor. That's the X factor in all six of these games. That's the X factor. Uh, the playoffs, in fact, could end up being, you know, having forfeits to them if certain protocols aren't met with COVID. So let's say, for example, I don't want to use this example, but let's say, you know, Cincinnati has, you know, COVID, you know, problems. They have COVID problems to the point to where they don't have enough players. They can't play. Alabama, by virtue of Cincinnati saying we can't go because we don't have enough players, would go all the way to the national championship without having to play Cincinnati. Let's say Michigan and Georgia both had COVID protocols or something like that. Let's say both of those teams were affected badly by COVID. That game would be completely off. And then, you know, combined with like Alabama, you know, piggybacking, you know, off of COVID to get to the national championship and nobody's there for Alabama to play, then Alabama wins by virtue of, you know, games getting canceled. It's a weird situation, but I mean, it's something that I hope does not affect any of these games at all. I really don't want that. There's been some games canceled. There's been some teams reshuffled. Uh, you know, there's been four bowls canceled. The Arizona Bowl, thank God, you know, because Barstool, Barstool's probably crying on Twitter right now. That I mean, again, I, I talked about Barstool, you know, having a bowl and why I thought it was stupid in the first place way back when. Uh, the Fedway Bowl, uh, the Sud Bowl was affected, but they got a team in now. Uh, the Pinstripe Bowl, and I forgot the other bowl. I think it was like uh, the Hawaii Bowl. Yeah, the Hawaii Bowl. That ended up not even happening. Like Memphis just took the Hawaii Bowl trophy and, you know, took a nice vacation in Hawaii, you know, without having to play Hawaii. Um, so, yeah. There's been like four bowl cancellations so far. Hopefully there isn't any more. I'm probably going to go watch a lot of these bowl games again. These six are more important to me anyway. Aside from the first bowl Saturday, which we talked about, you know, two weeks ago. You know, the, these six games are far more important here. So why don't we get to it? Why don't we get to it? Alabama, Cincinnati, in the Cotton Bowl. It's going to be real intriguing to see, you know, what Luke Fickle has designed for Nick Saban in this game. It's going to be really interesting to see how Cincinnati stacks up against Alabama. We know Cincinnati is the first group of five team to make it. We know Alabama's the number one overall seed. We know that stuff. But what in the world kind of matchup are we going to get, you know, Bryce Young against the Cincinnati defense? What is that Cincy defense going to do against Bryce Young? Because we know Bryce Young can sling it. He can also run a little bit, but he can mostly sling it. And... With the way, you know, these Cincy um, DBs are, Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant, you know, uh, those guys might be on Jameis Williams all afternoon. They might be on all, they might be on them all afternoon, along with the other Alabama receivers. Of course, I don't think there's going to be any Mechie in this game, so I, I forgot. Uh, and, you know, I think Mechie got injured, if I'm not mistaken. Um, again, my, my memory is not that great, so... <laughs> um, so this one is going to be intriguing, you know, for the Alabama offense. For the Cincinnati offense, can Desmond Ritter do it? Can he step it up? You know, Jerome Ford and Alec Pierce are his guys on offense. You know, we've been watching throughout the season. And, you know, Will Anderson's going to be coming for Desmond Ritter. Along with Toa Toa, you know, and other guys like that. You know, again, Alabama's defense is stacked as usual. It's going to be real intriguing to see what Alabama and Cincinnati are going to, you know, put on the table. I don't think it's going to be, you know, like a 14-point game like the, like the spread said. It was like a 13-and-a-half-point spread at one point, and I just don't think it's going to be like that. I think this game will be a lot closer 
than than what pundits might think. You know, it's going to be a lot closer. You know, again, the, the key is, is really just stopping. You know, Alabama's offense. That's really been the key over the past few weeks. Can Cincinnati stop Alabama's offense? You know, we know Cincinnati goes off to a little bit of a slow start. We know Alabama's had some slow starts throughout the season, but somebody's got to wake up quickly. Somebody's got to wake up when the sand is thrown in your eyes. You got to wake up quickly, and whoever wakes up first is going to get the first strike. And whoever gets the first strike gets the first advantage over the other. So, again, the Cotton Bowl is going to be very, very fun. I'll tell you that much right now. In the Orange Bowl, number two, Michigan. Number three, Georgia. Oh, down in Miami. Oh, it's going to be Jim Harbaugh, Kirby Smart. It's going to be a goozy. Hassan Haskins, can he run on this Georgia defense? Can he run on them? We'll see. We will see, man. Stetson Bennett, you know, throw it out there to Brock Bowers and, and, and these receivers, you know. I mean, Stetson Bennett has been playing much better. He's been playing much better football, you know. I mean, Georgia's O-line, they got to hold up against Aiden Hutchinson and, and the rest of that Michigan defense. They got to hold up a little bit better than what they did against Alabama because, I mean, Alabama was schooling the Georgia O-line. They were schooling them, you know. So it's going to be an interesting battle in the trenches. Again, both these defenses are just going to be on point. They're going to be on point in this game. It's going to be a real defensive slugfest. I think the score might even be lower than what the spread says here, in all honesty. So you pay attention to point spreads and stuff like that if you're better. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I think, I think Michigan Georgia is going to be a lot. It's going to be ugly. It's going to be real ugly, I think, you know. It, it, it could be ugly in the sense that it's going to be like a 7-6 game. I, I, I truly think that might happen. I mean, this is just this is just two of the best defenses in college football. I, I just think that's going to happen, man. I really do. So, Michigan-Georgia is going to be extremely, extremely intriguing to see who wins the battle of the trenches. In the other New Year's Six games, we have the Peach Bowl on Thursday night. Yeah, Thursday night, I think. That'll start that'll start us off. Um, Pitt, Michigan State. Um, unfortunately, no Kenneth Walker, no Kenny Pickett. But, hey, at least Pitt got Keaton Slovis from the transfer portal. You know, it, it won't be next year until he plays, but, I mean, he got they, Pitt got the, this man from the portal. And Keaton Slovis is actually a pretty decent passer and stuff like that. So we'll see, you know. What happens next year? Obviously, we can't talk about Keaton Slovis' pit starter this year. So, who will be starting for Pitt? How about Nick Patty? Yeah, I, I know. I, I have no idea who this is. I mean, he, he I don't think he's done anything, you know, all season long. You know, we haven't really been focusing on Pitt too much here on the channel this year until, you know, late in the season. So, it looks like... Patty's going to be able to toss it to Jordan Addison all night because we know Michigan State's defense is not good against the pass. Not not good at all. And, you know, if Peyton Thorne and Jalen Reed, if they can sling it too, you know, if they can sling it to one another too, you know, because, I mean, Pitt's defense is also pretty good. It's also pretty good defense, Pitt's defense is. So we'll see what Peyton Thorne can do, you know, if he can pass on this defense, if he can pass on the Panthers' defense, it, it might be an intriguing time. Again, again, no Kenneth Walker, so that's going to affect Michigan State's running game. No Kenny Pickett, you know, that's going to affect Pitt's passing game a little bit. But I, I suspect a real fun game here in the Peach Bowl. I really do. So, Narduzzi versus Mel Tucker. Pat Narduzzi versus Mel Tucker. It's going to be real, real fun to watch these two go at it as coaches on the sidelines. Oklahoma State and Notre Dame on New Year's Day. Yes, New Year's Day is on a Saturday this year. And unfortunately, you know, we, you know, uh, I talk about like the Citrus Bowl or the Outback Bowl, but there's no reason for me to. Um, Fiesta Bowl, on the other hand, real, real fun. No Kyron Williams, no Kyle Hamilton for Notre Dame. Um, Jim Knowles got hired by Ohio State, so he's not going to be at the game for Oklahoma State. Marcus Freeman, he's looking to take this talented Irish squad with 
a guy like Isaiah Foskey, you know, who I don't think we've talked about at all. I mean, he's definitely a guy that can do some pass contain type stuff, you know, and this Oklahoma State deep defense is good. We know that. Uh, so we'll see, you know, what in the world Jack Cohn and company. I'm not sure if Cohn is starting or not, um, but. You know, this is an intriguing Irish squad. A very talented Irish squad, too. Again, only one loss to Cincinnati. Um, and this is going to be fun for Oklahoma State. This is going to be a real fun matchup. It's with Sanders. Jalen Warren should be back. And, of course, Mike Gundy himself. So, see what kind of game Marcus Freeman, the former D.C., now head coach for Notre Dame, has against the madman known as Mike Gundy. In the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. Um, yeah, we knew there were going to be some opt-outs here for Ohio State. We found out today, actually, that, yeah, you know, this is speaking for me coming, talking about this on Monday, turning it to Tuesday. No Garrett Wilson, no Chris Olave. So it's just going to be C.J. Stroud out there. Probably, um, I'm not sure if Sniff Najiba is playing either, but... Um, but really, the only guy for Utah that I know is out is probably Britton Covey, who's been like a guy at Utah for like 77 years. But, you know, this is a Utah defense that is ferocious. This is a Utah defense that likes to play football. They like to play. They're going to be hella motivated for their first Rose Bowl. Devin Lloyd leads this Utah defense, and he's looking to get C.J. Stroud down to the ground and, you know, he, and, you know, I mean, C.J. Stroud might be on the ground all day if the O-line for Ohio State can't hold up. Because, I mean, remember, you know, they, Michigan was able to penetrate the Ohio State O-line, you know, a couple weeks back, you know, and it, it or rather a month ago, not a couple weeks back, a month ago. And, you know, Stroud was definitely affected. He still, he still threw for a monster amount of yards, as usual. But, I mean, he was definitely affected when the times – came up and I think the same thing might happen here especially you know none of the receivers there you know for Ohio State none of the trio is there I don't think you know or at least two-thirds of the trio so Kyle Whittenham and Ryan Day gonna be a real fun matchup here real fun one in the Sugar Bowl the last game of the New Year's six Ole Miss takes on Baylor Matt Corral's final game before the NFL draft, at least Matt Corral stuck around. Thank goodness for that. Um, I'm not sure, you know, if things change, but I do believe he said he was going to play. Gary Bohannon will be back, so for Baylor, that's going to be interesting. Abram Smith, I think he might have a big game. You know, we know Ole Miss also has a pretty balanced attack, so this this Ole Miss team is a stack stack team. I'll tell you that much. You know, just a damn good year for Ole Miss. Jeff Levy, unfortunately. He will be leaving for Oklahoma. Um, I forgot what coordinator position he was. I think he's like the offensive coordinator. I, I, I forget. Um, so that's going to be intriguing. You know, so Oklahoma, you know, you know the, the storylines, the coaches moving and stuff like that is, is always intriguing. And then, of course, you know, Dave Aranda versus Lane Kiffin. It, it's, it's all you need to know about this matchup. A damn good one. A damn good Sugar Bowl to close out New Year's Day. So New Year's Six, we know what it is, we know what it looks like, and we know what's gonna happen. At least we think, right? Right? Y'all, y'all. I, I bet somebody's thinking, you know, Alabama's gonna blow out Cincinnati. I bet somebody's thinking, oh, COVID might wreck one of these games. I hope not. I hope not for any of those scenarios. I hope we get six intriguing fun and good games to close out the new year and to start 2022 the right way because I'm I'm, I'm going to be all excited. I cannot wait for any of these six games. So hopefully nothing happens you know in between now and Thursday night and Friday and then Saturday. I mean hopefully nothing happens at all. Again I'm beyond excited. I will see you all you know, again, you know, late on New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, we'll be discussing, you know, all the New Year's Six, all of the, um, you know, all the bowl games and stuff like that. So, you know, stick around.
come on back to the channel and make sure you subscribe and stuff like that. You know, and again, we'll see you all soon. Who's ready for the New Year's Six? Because I am. Raise your hands, kids. Raise your hands. And let's get lit. Take care, everybody.